Hey YouTube, this is Kevin Bowling of Bowling Small Engine, and today guys, I'm working on a Troy built Bronco. Uh, this Troy built Bronco had a significant amount of damage done to it over the years. Um, as you guys can hear in the background, there is a neighbor playing with a turkey call. I apologize. <laughs> but anyway, back into this video. Um, the, as you can clearly see, there's a Kohler Courage on it. Kohler Courage single cylinders are not in any way my favorite engines. I absolutely hate these engines to tell you the truth they're not as bad as Tecumseh's but I'll be straight with you guys are pretty damn close um, obviously you can see that I've had to put a new key switch in this mower uh, it was completely missing the key switch when I got it um, the battery was completely dead this is the battery that was in it and of course they had actually put some kind of washer to uh, help um, hold the positive cable on. I really don't know what that was all about but I did put the right terminal on when of course I put the new battery. And this is just a simple 230 cold cranking amp battery that you can get at any local Walmart. Um, I won't deny the truth though guys make sure you bring a core with you. Uh, the cores locally are $12 so I spent like almost 35 bucks on this battery. So you know just keep that in mind guys. Make sure you take a core with you. Um, the reason that I'm doing this video guys is to show you the lengths that some people will go to in desperation to fix a mower and <laughs> I was blown away I'll just be straight with you guys as you can clearly see uh, I pulled the carburetor off the insulator and uh, I was just shocked to see the gaskets okay I'm gonna show you guys the gaskets here momentarily but first let's have a look at this insulator as you guys can see, this insulator has got a crack all the way from the bottom completely to the top where people typically will over torque the bolts that hold these insulators to the engine or I should say at least to the cylinder and when that happens they'll get cracks like this that will cause air leaks and the engines won't run for shit guys. Um, to be honest with you guys, that's one of the reasons that I really hate these engines. You know, I could name probably a hundred, truthfully, but this is one of the leading causes that uh, I really hate about these engines. But as you can see, they've even in desperation tried to use Permatex along with gaskets that they've just made. And they, I'm serious, when I say they just made the gaskets, they actually just made the gaskets for this. Um, I'll show you guys that momentarily, which... As you can probably see at this point, but, you know, that's the uh, bag that I put the gaskets in. The after fire, when I undone the bowl, the little plunger actually fell off in my hand. <laughs> so, I have no idea how long that uh, the plunger had been loose. But as you can clearly see, it's clearly off the after fire solenoid. The float bowl, whoever had worked on this before I got a hold of it, had actually put Permatex around the bowl gasket. And guys, that's a definite no-no. If you do that, I assure you, you're going to have the Permatex break down and it's actually going to affect the carburetor. In many cases, it actually will clog the jets and you will be forced to put them in an ultrasonic cleaner, boil them, okay? Just enable to uh, get the carburetor back to uh, a state that it'll actually, you know, perform as intended. But uh, I just want you guys to know that if you're ever tempted to put Permatex on one of these float bowl gaskets, just avoid yourself the conflict and aggravation. Don't do it. Now obviously you're going to see that they've even put tape on the grounding wire. I have no idea why. <laughs> I actually find that to be very shocking. But needless to say, as you can clearly see, it's there. Um, here, of course, is some of the gasket that uh, they had uh, tried to make. <laughs> they did a pretty good job on it. I'll give them that on this gasket. Now, they didn't do worth the shit on the other, but they did a pretty good job on this gasket. Now, as I was saying, guys, this is the gasket that they made. I'm just going to hold it up in the bag. 
and as you can clearly see <laughs> that is not that is not the gasket for this uh, mower in any way it's something that someone had made and in all honesty these gaskets are not that expensive I have no idea why anybody would go to such a great length to create a gasket like this it blows my mind and not only did they create a gasket they tried to tighten it up to such a degree that they broke the insulator which I showed just a little while ago guys and in all honesty it doesn't shock me considering what else I found with uh, this mower to be an issue um, the bearings are of course going out of the deck as you can clearly see the belt is uh, beginning to uh, unravel so it doesn't really shock me that you know someone has neglected this engine or mower shall we say to this degree uh, but I thought I'd show you guys so that you will uh, be aware of what you can expect out of these Troy builds uh, they're not built the way that you guys think I know there will be a lot of people say you know I've had mine for years it's you know a trusted piece of equipment blah 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 but in all honesty if you have one of these Kohler Courage engines on it truth be told you're going to run into issues okay I mean it's just an evident fact generally speaking it's carburetor issues not to this extent but uh, I've never seen very many people brag about not having a flooding issue let's just put it that way alright um, these engines are just terrible for flooding as you can clearly see they've even put an inline shutoff valve in it because that the carburetor no doubt had been flooding in the past at this point guys I pretty well covered everything I wanted to show you guys in regards to this Troy built Bronco that I'm working on I'm going to have to get a hold of the owner and let him know what I found and to be honest with you it's going to be pretty expensive um, just with the parts that I've already put into it I mean I'm estimating I know for sure I've got right at $35 like I told you guys in the battery and $17 or $18 in the key switch so by the time I order the insulator carb parts bearings for the deck if he chooses that route tubes for the tars I can promise you he's going to be in a pretty good chunk of change. But regardless guys, until the next video.